Good morning. So my name is Andrew Walker. This is my first visit to St. Bart's and I'm a parish priest in London, England. I'm also a part-time gardener, but it's really good to be here. So I'm beginning with a story which some of you may know. The little girl goes to her mother to ask where men and women, where humanity has come from. Her mother explains about God, the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. And later on, prompted by a comment in school, the little girl goes to her father and asks the same question. And he explains all about the theory of evolution and how we are descended from the apes. After mulling this over for some time, she returns to her mother and asks about the difference between the two stories. Her mother, without missing a beat, says, it's perfectly simple, darling. Your father was talking about his family and I about mine. So where we have come from, why and how we are here, is something of a theme as we move away from Advent and the Christmas season and Epiphany towards Lent and later Easter. And not just where we've come from, but who we are as a result, caught as we appear to be, between the sacred and the secular, the human and the divine, that which has come from the apes and that which has come from Eden. Now Jesus' birth as an infant, God's incarnation, the word made flesh, surely and finally bridge that gap. But it seems to me to take time for us human beings to understand that truth and to accept its implications for us. If we are members of Christ's body, baptized as Christians, why do we remain so stubbornly and only human and frail? Why do we continue to fall short and make mistakes? The Greek Orthodox rite for baptism has the phrase in it, theopoesis, the making of gods and goddesses. But do we really feel like that all the time? Are we really able to live that out? Now, if it's some comfort, our religion itself has long struggled with this dualism, the binary differentiation between human and divine, sacred and secular, material body and spiritual soul which was inherited largely from Greek philosophy. As one theologian comments, the really worrying thing about the phrase body and soul is the word and, as if they were two different and distinct realms, one descending from the apes, the other belonging to Eden. Now, I was once covering a Sunday service at a Brighton, England church, famous for the beauty of its artifacts and the historic nature of its collection of vestments. After the service, the sacrament asked if I admired the vestments that I'd been given to wear. And as a matter of fact, the sumptuous material, its deeply rich, splendid colour, and above all the exuberant swirls of gold braid had rather caught my eye and admiration, and I expressed those. Well, the sacristan replied, I'm glad you like it. We've just had it made up from the old curtains of the Regency pub next door. It seemed to me a lovely parallel, parable of that relationship between the sacred and the secular, what it means to be human, but also invited to share in God's divinity. For perhaps it's not one thing or another, body or soul, sacred or secular, apes or Eden. Perhaps it's both now in Christ, who was himself both human and divine. Perhaps it's curtain material and sacred garb. This dualism or separation of matter of spirit is, we are told, associated in the story of creation in Genesis with God's work on the second day of creation. God making the vault of heaven and separating out the waters of sky and sea. This is one day, the one day we read in the Bible, that God looked on his labours and did not find that what had been created was good. For every other day of creation we read, at the end, and God saw that it was good, but not for this second day. As if such separation in creation between heaven and earth were necessary, but regrettably so. But of course, what I'm suggesting today is that Christ's birth, his resurrection, and then his ascension, bring about a reunification of what it means to be human and what it means to be divine. And that necessary, the regrettable separation of heaven and earth reported on the second day of creation 
is now revealed in Jesus as redundant. And in that surely we can take hope and find confidence. Our journey of faith not striving for something elusive ahead, some imagined perfection we think we ought to be, but about some accepting something that has already happened in Jesus. One of my favourite prayers is from the poet W.H. Auden, and I'd like to end with that today. Because of his visitation, we may no longer desire God as if he were lacking. Our redemption is no longer a question of pursuit, but of surrender to him who is always and everywhere present. Therefore, at every moment, we pray that following him, we may depart from our anxieties into his peace. Amen.